What I love to do is introduce the right people to the right people, assemble the smartest people I can think of or reach out to to carry that conversation, and that's exactly what I've done today. Please give my panel a round of applause. Welcome. Okay, guys, Jay Martin here, CEO of Cambridge House, and I'm joined right now by Martin Kostwick, the CEO of Battery Mineral Resources. Martin, thanks so much for making the time. Jay, thank you very much for, for taking the time. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I'm, I am too. I'm looking forward to digging into this and getting behind the kimono because um, truthfully, you know, I'm looking for more horses in the renewable energy race. However, I'm very particular about that horse because, you know, it's a rapidly uh, growing and therefore innovating industry. And whenever you have a rapidly innovating industry, you have to exercise some caution on the inputs, right? Because things can be innovated in or innovated out. And so there's quite a lot of opportunities to invest in the minerals participating in the energy revolution. But I like to find a bit more security within the story. And that's what turned my head about you and, and BMR. So we're going to jump into all that. You know, I've had one, one uh, solid holding in this sector that I've had on the show now five or six times. They similar were involved in the renewable energy space, had a unique business model that provided me that additional security. Um, coincidentally, it's been a big win for my audience and I, and so now we're looking for something new. And um, so I want to jump into what you're up to. Prior to getting into the company details though, Martin, why don't we start with this? Because it's hard these days to like cut through media noise and focus on what's really important. And I'm talking about, you know, the supply and demand economics in the energy revolution. And so, you know, from your seat, yeah. what's what supply and demand factors should investors be focusing on and so they don't get distracted by any hype any promotion what's really important what really matters no that's a great question i i feel like the potential investor and our current investor um that would that would want to i think that would really like to look at battery mineral resources as a great venue a great exposure into this, what I would say is a global mega electrification trend. And I say it's a, I personally say it's a mega trend. It's, it's certainly a, a, a giant trend in towards electrification. And what we hope to do is provide our investors with, with a great gateway into having exposure to that trend. And for me, you know, it's, it's undeniable. It's out there. It's all around us. You know, you look at trends in other industries and you have to look for reports and you have to, try and determine really what the trend is, but th this trend's all around us. And I think the, the, the major things that I like to focus in on, mostly perhaps firstly on the commercial side of things, you know, you look at uh, utilities out there and, and this growing trend of, of green energy with power and solar. And, and, you know, these things are largely intermittent uh, type power sources. So the industry's out there trying to make these more efficient and more commercially viable. And one of the solutions they found is to, is to use batteries as power storage for these facilities. So they oversize the facilities, they produce enough power during the day, and then they store the rest of it so it gets them through the night, for example. So there's a big trend in, in utilities using batteries as, as power storage. I think there's also a, a very large uh, segment of the market that's making inroads and in replacing diesel generation for backup power uh, situations using batteries. But the one that we all are probably most aware of, and it's around us every day, would be the trend that we see out there with auto manufacturers. Everybody's scrambling to, uh, to outdo each other in offering electric vehicles and, and such you know, in their marketplace offerings. Many of them saying they're going completely away from uh, internal combustion engines over the coming years. So yeah. for me, those are the, the trends to watch, and, and those are the... No, precisely the, the types of um, activities out there that are going to uh, bolster the, the demand for battery minerals and, you know, ever, I think, ever increase that, that gap between uh, demand and supply. Right, right. Yeah, I love that. And I think the, the EV trend is going to get really, really exciting, not just as an investor, but as a driver, to be honest. I mean, I'm right now uh selling my range rover i'm looking at and we're looking at what we're going to buy and all this stuff and 
you know, what my wife and I decided to do is like, let's maybe just lease for two years because I feel like in two years, the variety of electric vehicles available to us, the quality of the mileage achievements, it's all going to be, it'll be a whole new game, right? The, the options on the table will be completely different from what they are just today. And so let's just pause maybe two years and then hit the market yeah. in two years with That's a lot right. more available, right? Enjoy your, your internal combustion car with lots of horsepower <laughs> for now and uh, see yeah. what's going out. But I totally agree. Um, right. We're kind of in the same situation at in my house. So, yeah. Got it. Got it. Absolutely. And and then, you know, a lot of the, the like, macro economists that I have on the show and I, we, I talk about, you know, what major trends are you watching right now? And emerging markets is always a big one that comes up, right? How are we playing emerging markets? And it strikes me as a big factor in this conversation because we're talking about billions of people who have the same desires that you and I have living in Canada, the US, Europe. Um, and we're probably going to play by different rules when it comes to energy production in order to achieve upgraded lifestyles across the globe. And so the, the EM trade, I think, really contributes to the renewable energy sector as well. Any thoughts on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely, Jay. I mean, we have uh, countries all around the world that are striving to be, uh, to have the same amenities that we enjoy in the countries you just listed. And, and that's, that's a, an incredibly strong trend and everybody's striving to, to be the same as us in that way. But then, but we're not sitting still either. You look at the first world countries and, and we're taking electrification to a whole other level. Mm. Um, and it's just going to perpetuate itself as we go. Okay, so I want to jump into into BMR a little bit and uh, share with my audience what you're building, what you guys are up to. And like I said, when we sort of hopped on here, what turned my head was the optionality in um, minerals like cobalt, like graphite. But then you've got this unique copper gold asset that provides a bit of security, potentially near term cash flow. And so for anybody who's not familiar, because actually relatively new company, um, why don't we start there, Martin? What's the, what's the elevator pitch or the highlight reel? What is BMR? Well, BMR is, is a, it is an emerging company. And, and when I say that, that is, it, it's actually a fact. We're a brand new company. We started trading uh, as a result of an RTO transaction back in February. So we've been around as a company uh, in the exploration scene for, for many years, but only recently uh, emerged as a publicly traded company. So we, we truly are an emerging company in a lot of ways. Um, um, but having said that, we're, we are a brand new company and people don't know about us. And I think that, uh, you know, when you look at um, getting exposure into the battery mineral space, we're just a great opportunity for, for the investor because we're brand new and no one knows about us. So I believe that's one of the factors that points towards us being undervalued. But um, having said that, that's, that's mechanics mostly, but really why do I say we're, we're undervalued? And, and, and we look at, the first thing you look at is, is the management, you look at the assets. We have a great team that we pulled together to, to run the company, right from our, our chairman all the way to, to our, our vice president of exploration. We have a, a tremendous amount of experience within the company. Everybody's driven towards providing value to the shareholders, providing the shareholders excellent exposure and potential upside to this global electrification trend. We have assets um, all along the spectrum of development from very early stage lithium asset in, in Nevada, let's say, to more advanced um, cobalt exploration assets, both in Northern Ontario and in Idaho in the Idaho cobalt trend. And so, all along that value chain, we, we, we have assets that are developing. And then more recently, we were able to purchase uh, the Punataki mine in Chile. It's a form of producing copper mine that was producing for up a little over nine years, operated by Glencore. It was actually their very first foray into copper operations into Chile, in Chile rather. And so th this mine is a, it's a great asset for us. It's, it was producing for about nine years as recently as April of 2020, it was in production. And we feel that, um, uh, you know, what a great platform to build a company from because this, this is our potential foray into cash flow, into near-term cash flowing. So you think about assets and, and the management team, but at the end of the day, I'm going to say something that I think everybody would agree with is that cash is king. 
And, and for us, that's exactly where we're headed is towards positive cash flow with the onset of, of reintroducing a production scenario at our Punataki mine in Chile. So I know the first question that we're going to get in the comments is why was it taken offline in April 2020 and, sure. and how are you going to restart it? Sure. So it, it's, it's a bit of a long story, I guess, as you might imagine, the mine has a pretty good operating history. Um, it was actually started by a company called Tamaya Resources and Glencore uh, picked it up from Tamaya and um, injected a, a lot of capital in there, mostly into the mine in the mill, as you would expect in any mining operation. They enjoyed uh, over eight years of excellent production and cash flow from the operation. But uh, Glencore being who they are and, and um, after they, I think particularly after they merged with Extrata, Punataki, which produces anywhere from 25 to 30 million pounds of copper a year, really became non-core for them. Okay. You know, at, at that time, they, they ended up with two or three operations that can produce that much copper in less than two weeks in some cases. Yeah. So it became a non-core asset and not unlike a lot of majors, they, they tended to divest of some of their smaller um, facilities at times. So what happened was uh, there was a group uh, of people based out of Peru that put together a junior mining company that picked up uh, Punataki from uh, Glencore and um, they started operating or they continued operating the mine uh, from Glencore, but ran into some trouble, mostly to do with cash flow. Um, I think, you know, unlike, uh, not unlike a lot of junior companies that come into the operating realm, they don't really have a, maybe a clear enough vision of what kind of working capital it takes to operate a mine. And perhaps that's, that's sort of the, the crux of why they ended up, um, closing the mine down and their demise was actually our benefit for sure. Um, so, you know, they, they ran into a bit of trouble in, de in a declining market. Uh, of copper prices. And then the last thing was, uh, uh, you know, the, the recent events of, of the global type that, that, that put the last nail in the coffin for them. And, and that's when we came in and started looking at the opportunity. Right. And, and that's exactly, that's your opportunity right there. Right. That's right. Brilliant. Very cool. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how many conversations we have on this show about where is the copper going to come from, right? We're pretty up to speed on the demand, right? And the, the, the demands, Yes. probably not slowing down, right? For a lot of the reasons we just discussed and, and many more, but also there's a, there's a cliff approaching on the supply side, right? Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time and a lot of cash to get large scale copper mines into production. And that's why I was so curious about, about this project in Chile. So what I want to move to now martin is trigger points right every investor wants to know okay that sounds great but what can i look forward to right news flow uh trigger point events obviously timeline on uh punataki uh in chile but so what can investors look forward to let's talk like 12 month time horizon yeah we you know that's a great question i'm glad you brought up we we you know we have a lot of catalysts in front of us and and that's why we, you know, we're firm in our belief that we're just an excellent avenue for people to have exposure to this electrification trend. Copper not being, you know, people talk obviously a lot about the other battery minerals, which we're very invested in, but copper is always going to be there and it's increasing actually as a result of this trend. So we look at the Punataki um, primarily as a series of catalysts for us coming up. You know, our plan after we've we've now closed the acquisition, our plan is to, to develop the property. And part of that development plan is a, uh, a drill program, which we're engaged in right now. Um, we, we were able to pull together a drill program and bring in the contractors and get started very soon after the acquisition. I'm very proud of the team for doing that. And we are engaged uh, with a drilling program right now. Um, we plan on coming out with a, uh, with a resource, a brand new resource statement, Jay. Okay. Um, of which, um, um, of which the cornerstone um, subsequent to the resource statement and, um, is going to be our technical report, and that that drill program is going to be the cornerstone to the new technical report. So, with the drill program, the technical report, you know, and, and it's I got to say uh, one comment about the technical report: it's not going to be 
what some people might think of as basically a science experiment, and then you're going to do another report and another report. Um, this report for us is really going to be the roadmap to put the mine back into production. Okay. So, you know, you're, you're going to see great drill results coming out. You're going to see us announcing various uh, achievements that we're making in the engineering side of things um, to produce the technical report. You're going to see the technical report coming out. Um, you're going to see us making a production decision based on that report. All of these things are catalysts that are coming at the investor in the near future here. So we, we believe that we have a very good chance of, of bringing this thing back into production into sustainable, uh, strong cash flow in production within about 12 months. Um, so, so those are all catalysts that are in front of us. And, um, and you know, that's, that's where our focus is. We have to get this right. We know that and, and we're very prepared to do that. But having said that, we're not stopping there, Jay. Um, we, we know that uh, there's so many, only so much value that a single mine producer can, can achieve in the marketplace. And, you know, I would have never come to the company unless I thought that this was a great platform to build a company. So we are out there looking for other creative opportunities to bring in. So mm -hmm. we look forward to some announcements along those lines in the coming months as well. Okay. Well, I want to have you back on in the coming months to check in on that then, Martin. Absolutely. Um, Okay, look, I appreciate your time. The ticker is BMR. No shocker there for anybody who wants to take a look. Um, Martin, thanks again for coming on, introducing the story. I was glad we could get you in front of my audience and I'd love to do it again sometime. Pleased to do it again. And thank you very much, Jay. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please hit subscribe. I'd love to have you on the team. And if you want to take the next step and go a bit deeper with my content, I publish a free weekly newsletter every Friday where I debrief my portfolio. I distill the top lessons I've uncovered from the guests I've had on this show every week. And I talk about sectors and industries that I think are poised to move, areas I'm looking for opportunity and places that I'm allocating capital. I love writing it. We publish every Friday. The link is right beneath this video. Love to have you join the tribe.